This is a 20 plus year old patient who presented with several weeks history of headache, progressive weakness on the left side of the body, as well as difficulty with gait and balance. On physical examination, patient was alert and oriented, but had some left-sided hemiparesis or weakness with upper tract signs. Essentially, patient had sustained clonus, positive Hoffman, and Bobinski reflexes. A positive Hoffman signs named after German neurologist Dr. Johann Hoffman. It is suggestive of corticospinal tract dysfunction, which is responsible for voluntary motor function, and is localized to a cervical segment of the spinal cord or above. A positive Babinski, on the other hand, is named after French neurologist Joseph Babinski, likewise suggesting of disruption of the corticospinal tract, but anywhere in the spinal cord or brain. MRI scan of the brain showed a large mass at the temporoparietal junction with significant local mass effect and vasogenic edema, thus explaining the neurological findings of corticospinal tract dysfunction and weakness on the left side. Patient was taken to the operating room for surgical resection of this tumor using computer navigation and neurophysiological monitoring with brain mapping. He was positioned supine with shoulder roll elevating the right shoulder and head comfortably turned to the left, exposing the temporoparietal area. Computer navigation was used to localize the tumor and the incision was planned along a plane bisecting the anterior and posterior poles of the tumor. Here's a view through the surgical microscope. The surgical corridor was optimized for a dissection plane parallel to primary motor and sensory cortex, minimizing shear forces on these delicate tracts during the dissection. Primary sensory cortex is in the anterior and superior portion of the surgical exposure. A circular bone flap was then elevated using a single bear hole, exposing the underlying relaxed dura. This relaxation is, of course, induced chemically using hypertonic saline and mannitol. Upon opening of dura, the tumor can be easily seen and distinguished from the normal brain. We performed a sleep mapping, delivering stimulus of about 2 to 3 seconds, starting at 2 mA and increased it in 2 mA increments, approximating the posterior border of postcentral gyrus or primary sensory cortex. Sodium fluorescein guided microscopy combined with computer navigation was used to confirm the location of the tumor. Bipolar cautery and microsuction was used to establish a border between the tumor and surrounding brain.
Low current bipolar cautery is used frequently to harden the capsule of the tumor, rendering it more distinct than the adjacent delicate brain tissue. Tumor is seemingly removed in one piece in a gross total fashion. However, we are well aware of our blind spot in the inferior border of the exposure and pole of the tumor. Sodium fluorescein guided microscopy showed an area in the blind corner suspicious for residual tumor. This area is further explored and additional tumor is discovered and removed with no injury to the surrounding brain. Hydrogen peroxide solution soaked cotton balls is laid over the cavity of the tumor resection site for both destruction of neoplastic cells that may reside in the cavity and also for hemostasis. The cavity is also covered with hemostatic agent. Duro is reapproximated and duroplasty completed. The bone flap is reapproximated and the border between the bone flap and the cranium is covered with synthetic agent to achieve a better cosmetic result. Patient had no neurological deficit and was discharged home. Post-operative MRI scan of the brain immediately and approximately a year after showed no radiographic evidence of residual or recurrent tumor. The pathology of this tumor, unfortunately, was glioblastoma multiforme with MGMT promoter methylation and IDH1 or IDH2 mutation not detected.
Thank you for watching and as requested, uh, this was a longer video than usual.